I'm Camel Deep Bowie, editor of the British Journal of Psychiatry, and one of my duties uh, as editor, and the privilege also, is to interview the presidential candidates for the Royal College of Psychiatrists. I'm joined by, on a scarlet, a sixth form student who's going to pose some questions with me, and one of the presidential candidates is Dr. Lawrence Minus Wallace, who's the registrar of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, a consultant psychiatrist, and also a medical director at Dorset Healthcare. Lawrence, why do you want to be president of the Royal College of Psychiatrists? I love being a psychiatrist. I think I've been uh, very lucky in my career. But what really worries me that uh, not enough uh, keen young doctors are actually are choosing psychiatry as a career. So I think the main reason that I want to uh, become president is to continue the work that I've done as registrar, trying to deal with the issues that underpin that, uh, in particular leadership. Um, I want psychiatrists to see themselves as leaders of, the, of their clinical team. Um, dealing with some of the aftermath of new ways of working and actually clarifying uh, when psychiatrists are needed, not for ourselves but for the benefit of patients. And actually also remembering that it's the Royal College of Psychiatrists and I think at times the college needs to, to, to stand up and, and, and speak for its own standards. Um, seeking a consensus when it can, but, but actually there's times when I think we need to stand up and say this is what we think and this is what is, this is, what is right. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's, that, that, that in essence is why, why I want to stand. What's the single most important issue that you will address in your presidency? Well alongside recruitment, if you just put that to one side, I, I think the biggest issue that we uh, are going to face is uh, how to protect standards and, and services uh, at a time of, of increasing financial cuts and what, what role does the college have in that and, and, and it's my view that it has um, an important role. Um, I, I, first of all, clarity about what our standards are because if we, if we haven't made it clear how can we uh, make sure that organisations uh, deliver them. Um, secondly, absolutely making it clear when uh, the psychiatrist is needed um, and there's, a, there's a real issue in, in some parts of the country where a, a, a false economy, I think, of, of looking to try and replace psychiatrists with, with, with other professionals. And, 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 and we need to be absolutely clear uh, when patients need our expertise. Uh, for, for example, um, many, many patients require a psychiatrist to do uh, the assessment, to make a diagnosis and a proper formulation leading to management. Uh, it may well then be that other members of the team take over the management and can do many parts of it, but if you haven't had the psychiatrist there right up front, um, I think there's, that there's often a real problem. And uh, I, I think we're facing a, 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 a real crisis in many parts of the country uh, with beds and, uh, and, and how, uh, uh, how we're going to make sure that there are enough beds for, for, for patients in, in crisis and, and at other times I think the college can have a, a really useful role in, in coordinating and putting together what is a satisfactory number of beds. And, and, and I suppose, it, uh, and just the final bit on, 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 on resources is we, we know that psychiatrists, that our salaries are greater than um, uh, other members of the team, but what I think the college could really do some useful work on is, is looking at our cost effectiveness. So it, it's certainly uh, my, my view that psychiatrists see often many more members, uh, uh, many more patients than, than other members of the team. We make really important decisions about discharge, about uh, investigations, about, uh, about inpatient care. And, and I think a piece of work actually demonstrating our cost effectiveness and value would be really important. Um, I'm mindful that the GPs did that when they were looking at nurse practitioners and what they found was that although nurse practitioners were, were cheaper in salary terms um, than the GP, actually when you looked at how many patients, that the, they saw patients more slowly, they saw, uh, uh, they saw patients more frequently, uh, they made fewer decisions and, and actually on cost effectiveness GPs were, 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 were better than nurse practitioners and I think that's the sort of work that we need to do to help demonstrate the real value that the consultant psychiatrist brings to a team. Mm -hmm. You mentioned recruitment. I'm going to ask Anna to ask you a few questions. Um, so, what can you say to attract young people in schools to consider psychiatry's profession? A, a super question, Anna. And, and I, I've got a 17-year-old son. Um, and, and, and to my absolute horror, um, about uh, th three months ago, he said to me as we we're having a meal, he said, "He said, Dad, um, what's the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist?" Well. I, I mean, if my son doesn't know what the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist, what hope is there for all the other uh, uh, sixth form students, bright sixth form students, that 
that are interested in emotional health, uh, interested in wanting to talk to people and, and actually make their lives better, how do they know that they need to be a psychiatrist and not a psychologist? And so absolutely I think the first thing we need to do is, as, 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 a, as a college and a profession, really get the message out there that actually if, 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 you, if you're interested not only in thinking about the physical health of, of patients but their emotional health, thinking about um, the, the, the social situation in which they find themselves, Psychiatry is a fantastic career to, 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 to go into. Um, be, you, you become a doctor and a psychiatrist and, and don't get seduced into thinking you want to do psychology. Okay, perfect, thanks. Um, so students with mental health problems are dropping out more than ever. And within four years, the number of student suicides has doubled in women and increased by a third in men. So do you think universities are doing enough to support students with mental health problems? And how would you prevent this incline in stu um, student suicides? I think there's a real issue um, with uh, stigma that st still persists, um, and, and it's not just among students, it's, it, it's across the board. How do we make it as acceptable to go and seek help uh, when you're feeling down and when you're feeling anxious as if, 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 if you broke your neck or you've got a temperature? And, and that the college absolutely needs to continue with others to play a real role in, uh, in, in ensuring that, uh, uh, that, that it's, it's just as acceptable to seek help for emotional problems. But the second issue, and, and, and I feel this really strongly, I, I was involved in uh, reviewing a death for a, a, an outside coroner of, 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 of a young man at, at university who, who'd come home and very sadly, very sadly uh, killed himself. And when I reviewed the care that this young man had received, he'd never seen a psychiatrist. He had seen a succession. He had gone from a, 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 a nurse assessment and a crisis service. He had then gone to a, 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 a psychological treatment service, who then rejected him because he was thought to be too suicidal. He went back to another nurse assessment and another part of the service, and then they said he no, he needed to go back to the psychological treatment service. And so I, I, I actually think that we need to recognise that actually young people, um, just as other people, but, but young people can actually have serious psychiatric disorders as well. It's very clear this young man had a depressive disorder that needed to, needed to be treated and he needed to have had an assessment from a psychiatrist. So in some ways it, the key issue is going back to, to what I was talking about before, that the college absolutely has to make sure that psychiatrists are there as part of, of, of initial assessments and, and, and not, for example, think... In, in the example you've given, um, oh, this is a young person, this, this is, this is a, a, a mild adjustment problem that's having difficulties of, of, of coping with the transition to university, but I actually think it could be a real illness here that actually requires treatment. Okay, thank you. And finally, what will you do to improve recruitment into psychiatry? We've done a huge amount, actually, over the last three years. When I started as registrar, uh, recruitment, I saw, is the absolute biggest thing that we were facing because if, if, if at the time, we were only getting 0.7 applicants per place for our core training schemes. Um, and, and that's even better, uh, than, than, uh, it was even worse than that sounds because, in fact, you're allowed to apply to two uh, 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 jobs. So, so, in fact, we're only getting a third the number of people that we, we wanted uh, and required. It's a lot. Lots happened, and in fact, we've more than doubled that. But it's, it's the application rate per place has more than doubled. And in fact, last year, uh, the last recruitment round, applications were up by seventeen percent in, in in real terms. So it's, a lot's happened. And what's happened is, is is first of all, at every every. Uh, uh, Medical school. There's now a psychiatry society, and those are those are thriving psychiatry. It's, it's seen as as it's just as important to be, a, 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 or just just as valuable being interested in psychiatry as in medicine and surgery. Um, but the biggest thing that's going to make it is 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 a, is a real increase in the number of foundation year posts. Those those are the posts you do straight after qualifying. Um, uh, three years ago, there were uh, uh, under five percent of of doctors in their first two years did a psychiatry job. Um, the college has persuaded the uh, program board for education program board for England to actually increase that. So uh, nearly a quarter of, 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 of young doctors will do psychiatry in their first year post qualifying, and then another nearly a quarter will do it in their second year post qualifying. So nearly fifty percent of, of, of young doctors will do four months in psychiatry, and that will transform recruitment. And the reason it will transform recruitment is because the more psychiatry uh, doctors do, 
that the more likely they are to choose it as a career because they realise, whatever people have said, and whatever stigmatising things people have said, they realise that actually this is a really interesting job to do. And so I think that in, in increase in, in, in foundation year posts, as long as we give them a really positive experience of psychiatry, will we'll, we'll get us the numbers we need. Where has UK mental health policy gone wrong, given we have more detentions than ever before, poor emergency mental health care, threats to local services, so reducing coverage, and there is the issue of low morale in the profession? Well, I, I would be totally gloomy that it's all gone wrong. I actually think there are many patients that actually get a, a, a jolly good experience of, of their health care. Uh, if I just take uh, people from my own team, I, I've got a, 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 a man with really quite a severe uh, schizophrenic illness. He'd had four uh, compulsory admissions. He's now on clozapine, totally well, uh, uh, holding down a job, living with his wife and family. I, I, I see him once a year, and I only see him once a year because um, his GP won't prescribe the clozapine. And, 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 and patients with bipolar disorder, also really well. Um, I, I see them regularly because they're quite a complex medication regime. I think they benefit from seeing a, a, a psychiatrist. Um, Pick, pick things up when they go when they go wrong, um, and, and we've got, I, I work with a couple of excellent CPNs who who who, who support people who, who who continue to have symptoms. So, so I actually think there's a lot of people that actually get good care, uh, and we need to to celebrate that. Um, what's going wrong, however, or what has gone wrong, and that needs to be reversed? I, I suppose I, I just pick two things. One is is beds uh, and, and emergency care. I, I, I think it's an absolute scandal that that if you have a heart attack. Can ring 999 and there's a fighting chance that an ambulance will come and, and you'll be uh, in a hospital being treated within an hour. Um, that's just, just what happened. If you ring 999 uh, acutely psychotic and suicidal, the chances are that, well, you may get a crisis assessment, um, you may be left at home, you may be told there's nothing can be done till, till, till uh, after the weekend, you may be told there's no beds. And, and, and absolutely we've got to get uh, emergency care for, for mental health right, and there's all sorts of things that, 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 that go into that. But, but, but until we've got that right, that's just a, a clear example of where um, mental health services are being stigmatised against. But the second, and I'll just come back to, uh, and going to new, low morale, uh, coming back to new ways of working. Um, new ways of working um, uh, ha had a good aspect to it. It, it clarified the responsibility that, that consultants had for uh, their teams, and, and they weren't responsible for hundreds and hundreds of patients. But actually it's been completely misused, um, the suggestion that we're all the same um, and, and, and that others can, can do our jobs is, 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 a, is a nonsense. And the college, I, I think, has now much more clearly said, this is when you need to see a psychiatrist. Um, you need to see a psychiatrist at the, 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 the beginning of assessments. Uh, uh, you need to see a psychiatrist in risky times. There are some people that need to see a psychiatrist and outpatients regularly. And, and I think setting standards for that actually will help morale. But, but actually more importantly, we're, we're, that, that it's not for us as psychiatrists. It's actually that's what our patients will benefit from. Is there a role for doctors as managers, or just good managers working alongside highly competent senior clinicians? Oh, with, without a doubt, both. Absolutely without a doubt. Um, the, 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 the psychiatrist, all psychiatrists, actually should be clinical leaders in their team. And, and by clinical leadership, what I mean is that they should be articulating and defining uh, what is high quality care for their patients, making sure they pull the team along with them, making sure that they, they've been given uh, information to know whether they're delivering that care, and if they're not, that they need to be leading the change. That, that's clinical leadership. That's what every psychiatrist should, should be doing, whatever part of the service they're at. Um, but absolutely, doctors should be leading in organisations as well. And there's a, a, some fantastic research from the States um, that actually shows that if you take the top 100 hospitals, cancer, cardiac and GI, not, not psychiatry unfortunately, but cancer, cardiac and GI, 40% of, 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 of the chief executives of those hospitals are doctors, 40%, compared with 4%. Uh, in hospitals overall. And so there's something about uh, uh, the person in charge of an organisation absolutely knowing what is going on in the organisation that, that means uh, that the organisation is better. And that's not just in healthcare, it's in engineers running car companies, um, uh, retail people running shops, it's, 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 it's absolutely the same. 
And, and, and the, other, the, the other shocking thing about uh, NHS management is, is, is um, well, I went to ask you, but the, the, the average duration of tenure of an NHS chief executive, 700 days, 700 days. 25% um, of NHS chief executives, as we're sitting here today, have been in post less than a year. So the other thing that, that we as doctors have, bringing to management, is, is not only our expertise, actually a bit of bit of duration that, that actually we actually have some organizational memory we know what's worked and what hasn't worked so we, we need to be both what do you think about the role of the public in managing the medical profession's roles and responsibilities I think we in psychiatry haven't used the public enough actually if you look at what uh, um, the patients say about their uh, psychiatrists from the colleges uh, ACP 360, uh, our, our, our feedback form, one and a half thousand psychiatrists, over 30,000 patients. The, the, the score is a, a six point scale, five is high, six is very high. Our average score overall is 5.6. The, the public who see uh, our patients are actually really value us. They, they see us as, as, as caring, they see us as respectful, they see us as listening and as genuine. And I think we need to get more of our, our patients out there advocating for services alongside us. Very mindful of the Herceptin story, it wasn't the, uh, it, it, it wasn't the breast cancer specialist that were up there being interviewed, it was the patient with breast cancer. And I think when we're fighting for services, we need to get our patients with schizophrenia, our patients with bipolar, that they need to be out there with us advocating for our services. So I have no worries about uh, uh, the public and patients being involved in, 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 in what we do. Academic psychiatry is producing little in terms of future leaders and innovative research for improving patients' lives. Do you agree? And if so, what is your remedy? I, I, I think it's a bit harsh to say that uh, uh, academic psychiatrists aren't producing leaders. I, I, I think in the past year I've been to some fantastic innovative talks from, from academic psychiatrists. Eve Johnston, Robin Murray, David Goldberg from past generation. Um, uh, you've been into been interviewing Simon Wesley uh, for, for, for the post of president, an uh, uh, absolutely inspiring academic. So I, I don't think we really have any worries um, that, that that we haven't got inspiring academics. What is more of a worry is 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 the next generation coming through and, and actually making sure that there's enough uh, funding for research, making sure that mental health gets enough of that funding, um, not only for our clinical research but also for the basic neuroscience underpinning that. And I think that is an issue, and the college really needs to be working with the funding bodies to to, to make uh, to, to bring that about and to, to 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 make sure psychiatry gets its gets its fair shares. There are many subspecialities in psychiatry. Do we need so many and can we afford it? So, almost across the whole of medicine, um, specialisation has been shown to bring huge benefits. So if, if, if I go and have an operation on my knee, I would rather go and see somebody that has done uh, 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 hundreds of them rather than somebody that does one or two uh, alongside everything else. So specialisation is, is a good thing in psychiatry and our patients shouldn't be uh, denied that. But however, there is, there is a, an important aspect of, of psychiatry that's different, and that is continuity is also hugely valuable. Um, uh, the relationship that we develop with our patients over a long period of time is, is valued by them, it's valued by us, and actually it leads to better outcomes as well. And so we in psychiatry, I think, have to balance the, the advantages of specialisation with the uh, advantages of continuity of care, and, and not to, not to, not to un and devalue continuity. Um, I, I, I think we are going to have to be a bit more flexible about, around the edges of, of our boundaries, um, and, and, but be clear that, that, that what we are doing is, is, is providing care that's in the interest of the patient and not in the interest of, 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 of whatever the latest sort of politically correct sort of management change is. And just take one example of that, um, so-called ageless services. Ageless services sounds very, very catchy. Who, who could disagree that we don't want services to be discriminating on age? But, but actually, also, who would, who would really want an 80-year-old in, in, in the bed next door to an 18-year-old? And, and, and so I think we need to be clear that where there's benefits of specialisation for patients, let's keep, let's keep it, but where, there's, where, where continuity is, is, is better, value that. And, and finally, what will the legacy of your presidency be? That is, what will you leave as a challenge for the president after you? 
Well, I suppose what I'd like to leave, what I'd like my legacy to be, is to uh, recruitment so that we are competitively recruiting into psychiatry so that we can pick those that are going to be the best psychiatrists of the future. I would like to see psychiatrists to be more confident um, and, and assured as leaders of their team, valued in teams and valued in organisations. What isn't going to be achieved in the next three years, but whoever's president, is, is actually dealing with all the issues of stigma that we still face. There's more that we can do with that and that, 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 that needs to, to uh, continue. And every generation of psychiatrists is going to have to fight for resources, uh, fight for resources against sort of more sexy areas of, of medicine, and that is going to be an ongoing battle, and particularly a battle for the next three years. Lawrence, thank you very much, and good luck with the elections. Thank you, and good luck to you, <laughs> Honour, too.